So persuasion has always come easier for me because I've always tried to be honest in my approach. You know, I don't persuade people when I know something is not gonna is going is not gonna add value to the business. That is my core um, element that I've used from when I was selling in selling trainers in stores to when I started selling software to business development to everything. As this has always always been my core values to try to have some honesty in everything you're selling and not just sell for the sake of selling. And that's always make persuasion easier for me because at the end of the day, persuasion is a conversation. You know, you're showing somebody that, look, I think this will benefit you because of A, B, C. Um, today, this is how you're doing things. This is what we can add into your business. This is how much time you're going to be saving, how much money you're going to be saving. This is how, you know, the tool will help you manage your risks better, etc. And people see, also human beings see through you. If you are not honest uh, within your persuasion, they will call you off. If you are honest within your persuasion, people are open and ready to listen to you. All right. Now, how do you know that a client of yours is going to buy from you? Because I, I understand now that you like the selling. <laughs> That's a very that. good question. <laughs> That's a very good question. I'm going to be honest. You never. Mm, yes. It's hard. Some clients are very open from the very beginning. You know you're presenting and um, is a take for them. Others are very close. Some people, you cannot read them, you know? And also uh, at the level of sales that I do, there is a lot of uh, sales stages, you know? Uh, you might present to the HR director, then after you're gonna present to the CFO, then you're gonna present to uh, procurement, then you know what I mean? So everybody would have um, a different say into it, you know? And how do I know? I don't know. I just try to make sure that the number one step, which is the need and analysis, breaking down the client's need, the client problem, the solution that we can bring into the business. I just make sure I nail that bit. And once I nail that bit, I know everything else will just follow. All right. but it's very hard. I cannot tell you that you walk into a meeting and you know, yeah, this is a close. No, but I'm very confident in what I sell. Um, I make sure that the, the, the need and analysis is done. I make sure to have, uh, I make sure to be very commercially aware in terms of my competition, you know, what they're offering, uh, the price range, everything that goes around it. And I stepped into them. I stepped into every meeting confident because I've done my homework before. And I know that I'm going to be going in there uh, to get business done. But then do I ever know if the client is going to buy? I can know. I'll put my hands up and tell you I never know. I just make sure that I do my, 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 my homework correctly. And if you do your homework correctly, in most of the cases, you get your result. It's a win. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like, it's like in everything, you know, when you train, you get the result. When you study, you get the result. When you, yeah most likely you're going to get the results. Yes. Now, you help companies to grow. Uh, also, maybe in new locations, uh, you help them to expand, correct? Yes. Now, how do you measure your growth? How do you know that you are growing? Uh, okay, I know there is money. I know there, is, there are dollars that you are going to count how much you, you make today and all that. But help me understand that one in detail. How do you measure your success when you help a company to grow and to expand? Maybe in your territory, or maybe the one that you're already in, uh, you just wanted to and uh, to get more to, to get more or return on investment. Um, you analyze that the business is growing when, um, first of all, you know, we're in a numbers game, as simple as that. When the percentage, um, for example, of next year is higher than the, what you achieved the year before, but before the year, the next year comes, uh, there's always targets, you know, you have a target set for you, um, which is the general yearly target. Then it's broken down into um, quarterly, then that's broken down into monthly, etc. cetera. Um, the only way of analyzing if there is growth in business is first of all, um, knowing that the numbers you are doing is higher than the previous year and is meeting your target or exceeding it. And second of all, we have a term that we, we say, uh, we call um, churn. Churn 
is actually the number of clients you are winning that are staying, you know, because sometimes you can win clients and they are not staying. They don't become play, paying clients in the long run. They end up, you know, disconnected after six months, after one year, etc. You also analyze that. And the churn percentage is a strong indicator in terms of how well the business is doing. Uh, now, in, in your sales, um, career, are there also some challenges? What would that be? Help us understand it. Yeah, there are definitely challenges. Uh, challenges as a salesperson, first thing first is uh, when the sale is taking way longer than you need to take. That's one challenge. But in my segment, in business development, going into a market, uh, there is one challenge. The culture differences can be a challenge if you're not prepared for it. You know, for example, um, in the UK, when you present a tool, people like it, you can get an answer pretty quickly compared to, for example, in France, where the sales cycle sometimes might take slightly longer because there need to be a lot of conversation internally. That's just how people do things. You know, they don't uh, rush into a decision like that. Um, so the culture difference, if you know prepared for it, can be a massive hit uh, in the head for you. Uh, I would say that's one of the targets in terms of the, one of the challenges, sorry, in terms of the business development segment. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now, let, let's look at the people that are listening to you right now. Uh, maybe they also want to get into sales, but they don't know how to get started. What would you recommend to them as a kind of maybe the strategy to get started and be successful in sales? In sales, um, like I said earlier, is a numbers game. Uh, you have to be willing to do things. Sales is a, is a great job because it kind of exposes you to, you know, exposes you to a lot of things, to growth uh, professionally, but also personally. Imagine getting 100 no's on a daily, you know, you just become very mentally strong because everybody you call or the majority of people you call, you get your, the door closed on you, you know, but within those 100 people, it might be five people that will literally make your entire day because you had a great conversation with someone, because you had a great meeting, because you had a great deal, for example. Um, and sales, I wouldn't say it's simple, but it's simple to some extent because it's a numbers game. You have to make your calls. You have to do your emails. You have to be willing to travel to exhibitions. You have to be willing to run the extra mile. What people are not going to be willing to do, you have to be comfortable doing that. And you have to be doing that with an open heart, with a mind, confident mindset that no matter what it is, you might go and get a, a big contact, you know, and that might result in one sale and closing your entire yearly budget. You know what I mean? So I would encourage them. You have to be, you have to be willing. You have to be willing and uh, driven. Uh, well, that question is very important. And also the answer you gave is very important um, in today because um, there are a lot of Africans, particularly young Africans that are online today with their cell phone. That cell phone is actually uh, the biggest instrument that we have in our century. Uh, in that, With that, you can connect to any part mm. of the world. So yes. that means you can do business with any person in the world. So what mm. is just left now is what do you want to do? You mm. can enter into sales. You can yeah. actually sell. Uh, what can you say? You can sell anything. Start with service. You can help somebody, help yeah. a company, connect people. One connect company, exactly. Connect exactly. another company. They will pay you. you get exactly. <laughs> as simple as as simple as. And you know what? I'm gonna add into that. We actually indirectly sell every day. When you meet people for the first time, you present yourself. This is who I am. This is what I do. What about you? Blah blah blah. And the other person, you never know. You might connect. They might be in an industry that's relative to your industry. You know, that's also selling. You know, in everything that we do, we indirectly sell, you know, to each other. But, of course, there is that bracket where we are called salespeople that people are slightly afraid of, you know. But sales is just a normal, a normal everyday thing, you know, and we do it on a daily basis. We do it since a very early age. You know, you meet friend at school, you're five years old, you're going to introduce them to yourself, show them what's your favorite toys. You know, that's your selling, selling yourself to them. You know, they might like you because of your toy. Then that person might remain your friend for the next 40 years of your life. You know, <laughs> how would you conclude the conversation that we have had today? Like maybe there is a message you wanted to leave behind or something you wanted to say. I did not ask you conclude it in your own way. Please go ahead. 
No problem. Um, I mean, I presented myself as a, you know, um, African who lives in Europe today and work in a European segment. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on one thing, Obey. Uh, I'm super passionate about my uh, continent. Uh, today, what I look to do is um, really try to help my continent in terms of the little pedigree that I have, the little knowledge that I have in some aspects. Uh, try to help either as young people, either as companies, you know, from my continent to be able to develop. You know, and I've worked with um, a lot of people. I've learned uh, from a lot of successful people. And um, my continent holds, um, I hold my continent at heart. So I'm very, very um, passionate um, about developing my continent with the little percentage that I can bring in. You know, this is something we didn't touch upon, but it's something that's very in my heart. And I wanted to share that with. And I just also want to encourage people, you know, um, time may be tough from time to time. You might feel that things are difficult from wherever you are in the world. Uh, but I just want to tell somebody, you have to keep striving. You have to do your work every day to the maximum that you can. And one day there is a certain door. One day there is a certain opportunity that will open to you that you never even expected. So whoever you are watching this, uh, I just encourage you to keep going, uh, keep chasing your dream, keep working hard, uh, going the extra mile. And um, there is an opportunity and a chance for everybody out there. But um, you have to keep grinding, keep working hard and, um, you know, exposing yourself to receiving whatever opportunity comes across you. I think you have used the word uh, extra buy twice here. That is very important. And I just want mm -hmm. to tell people that at the extra mile, there is no traffic at all. Yeah. Nothing, there is no competition there. When you get to the extra mile, you write your ticket. At the mm -hmm. extra mile, you don't, we all should strive to go the extra mile in respect of what you do. Because when you get there, you are you can basically write your own ticket. That is very, yeah. very important. I, I love that. I really love that. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for that, brother. Thank you. <laughs> you my pleasure, my <laughs> pleasure. And thank you to you, Obey, for taking the time. You know, uh, it was a very, very good conversation. And I also want to say, keep doing what you're doing. I really encourage you. And um, thank you for, for, for selecting me to have this conversation and be able to share, you know, with, um, with the audience. Thank you so much. It's been a yeah. pleasure here. Yeah.